Welcome back to an episode of Mushroom Adventures. This episode I'm going to show you my improved recipe and techniques for making bags of sawdust spawn. Um, in the past I've, I've had pretty much a, a standardized kind of uh, recipe going on. I just, if you remember, uh, start adding alfalfa to the mix. And then for a while I cut the alfalfa out and just did the, uh, the cotton seed meal. Remember it? Like a uh, very ground up, kind of dry feeling. It's like wheat bran, but higher in protein, much better mushroom food. So I just stuck to doing the sawdust and the cotton seed meal. And the results of that are, as you can see here, I had a very consistent first flush results. Everything uh, uh, coming out really nice, but uh, everything also very large, which uh, is okay for some restaurants, but some other restaurants would rather have smaller sizes of mushrooms. Um, but also too, you know, I get the smaller ones off the, the second and third flushes, but the trouble with using just the cotton meal and the sawdust it tends to give up all the nutrition pretty quick, so it doesn't make much of a second or third flush at all before the, the mold gets to it and the mycelium uh, starts getting too old and weak because there's no more food to eat. Now when I did the alfalfa, I got less of results off the first flush, but I got better su sustained second and third flushes, so I made up for it that way. And uh, I got plenty of smaller mushrooms from it too. Also, too, I've noticed the, uh, the mushrooms that come off just the cotton seed meal and sawdust on the second and third flushes are a bit paler in color, and I've always noticed that that goes with uh, a, bit weaker in mush a bit weaker of a mushroom, which uh, tends to not hold up in storage as well. I'll have some that actually will uh, start getting moldy on the very outside of the mushroom. Um, even the inside will still stay good. You can actually almost shave the outside off and still use it, but, you know, that's not good. So. But what I'm changing up now for, as a recipe is I'm taking the alfalfa out and adding black oil sunflower seed. Now this is a decent brand. You can see there's not a whole lot of riffraff in there other than sunflower. I got some of this stuff. I'm not really sure what it is. I think, I think actually some of this might be ergot. No, nah, it's like twigs. Basically I find ergots and bags of rye. But anyhow, the idea being is that the black oil sunflower will have a little bit more nutrition protein wise, you know, and you know, oil wise too. Mushrooms will even eat oils up. Uh, more nutrition than the alfalfa would give, um, and maybe cut down on the nitrogen, which might be too much anyhow with the alfalfa. And hopefully that would give a, still a good sustained first flush, but also a, a good sustained second and third, maybe even more. Uh, flushes afterwards. Also, I should note as well that the second flush came off very quick on the cotton seed meal and sawdust only recipe. Um, almost so fast that if I just left the uh, most of the uh, casing material on there, which I'm doing now, uh, some of the resting pins or pins that I thought were aborts within the casing mix actually grew up very quickly. Maybe only in like uh, three or four days after I uh, harvested. Which can be a good thing or a bad thing. But my recipe now, I'll post in the description. You can see here, I'm using for 12 bags, 19 pounds, 8 ounces of sawdust, 4 pounds of sunflower seed, 9 pounds cottonseed meal, 1 pound of plaster, 1 cup of coffee, that's uh, coffee grinds, and 5 gallons, 3 quarts of hot water. And so far, that's been pretty consistent. I did have a little bit of jumpiness back and forth, trying to get the, uh, the amount of water correct, where I, would, I was getting some bags that were uh, having water pulled up at the bottom just a little bit after they were pressure cooked. Now, even in this recipe, you'll sometimes get bags that have some liquid in the bottom of the bag uh, before you put it in the pressure cooker, but that's okay. Uh, the sunflower seed, which doesn't absorb the water too well at the start, uh, and the harder bits of uh, sawdust will absorb that excess water by the time it's done pressure cooking and when you mix it up during spawn or, uh, spawning time. 
So that's not, it's not going to be a problem. Just uh, keep an eye on it though. Sometimes if your ingredients have been sitting out in the garage during the summertime, when it's been very humid, it'll take up a lot more moisture. And uh, when you add the same amount of water, it'll appear to uh, be too much. So you might want to scale back if that's the case. I try to keep all my stuff in a dry garage, dry garage, and the, the door shut most of the time, especially if it's raining, just to try to keep everything nice and dry. Plus I go through stuff pretty fast, so I'm, I'm using uh, fresh bags and stuff pretty quickly. So uh, let's get the stuff mixed up and the recipe and see what it looks like after I've mixed it. You can see here, everything mixed up. Now it is a bit wetter. If I dig down to the bottom, and it doesn't seem to be too bad in this batch, but I don't see any standing water. But it definitely feels heavier than it would if it was just cottonseed meal and the sawdust. Let's see if I can I squeeze some some water cores up. But, but that's all right, because as soon as we cook it up, it'll even out the moisture and be just fine. I'm going to show you the new way that I'm folding these bags up. I'm not using the Tyvek filters in them anymore. They really just didn't seem to be necessary, and uh, I get a better vacuum seal when I don't have them. Uh, doesn't let any air back into it. Which before I thought it was kind of a problematic because it was a bit hard to get open, but now I have a better technique on opening them, so it's not an issue anymore. You see here I'm just going to fold the edges as so. Get the gussets in. Now before you remember I would go back, fold it back and forth, flip it over, and then tape it across. I got a better way now, it's a lot faster and simpler. Just fold it underneath with the, the patch on the bottom. You can see just fold it all the way to the top touches the base of the bag right there. Kind of crimp it a little bit and then fold it down like that. And then you can slide it next to another bag to hold it there. And then once you get it into the pressure cooker, you just make sure that the folded edge is up against the wall of the cooker, and that way it has no chance of flopping out. And that'll save you the time from putting the filters in and uh, give you a better seal. So if you have to have the bags um, in a tub waiting to be inoculated for a day or two, they'll uh, be more secure and not getting contaminated. It's been about 12 hours, and these cookers have cool down enough that I don't need any kind of gloves or anything to take the bags out. And you see I'm putting them in these Rubbermaid totes. Each one of these totes will hold 12 of your sawdust bags. And they may bulge up a little bit and you might have to uh, put a weight or stack the one toe on top of the other to uh, keep the lid down. But I use a spray bottle full of alcohol, I spray with alcohol and spray the inside liberally and spray the lid liberally too. And then once it's closed up it makes a nice sanitary environment that you can keep the bags in there for a couple days. I'll be inoculating tomorrow, I just need the room of these two pressure cookers so I can make some uh, grain spawn bags today. But as you can see, take all those out. Still using the 14 inch pizza pans. They work well. No, no weight on top, that was unnecessary. And again, you can see how the, uh, the folds are up against the inside of the rim. Might take a little bit of practice to get them in there without flipping it up, but it's not too hard. But you can see it's well vacuum sealed. And no air is gonna get in there, it still flops up, but it's still good. If you see any stretchy plastic, or it's a lot more diameter ballooned out, or you see it kind of wrinkled up again and pinched, where it had stretched out at some point when it was uh, cooling down, um, or you get a bag that's blown and actually the saw is exposed, that's always because the pressure cooker cooled down too fast. And the way to, to control that is to add more blankets or to increase the uh, the fire or um, dial on your electric hot plate. You can see here I have my hot plates over here. I usually have a, a blown bag every once in a while. It's always because of these ones where uh, they don't have the back of the stove in area that's warmer. 
so they want to cool down a bit faster. So I have to put a lot of blankets on there, about uh, oh, at least two blankets per uh, cooker folded over. Just make sure always when you're putting blankets on cookers that you don't have them dangling over where uh, they can catch fire and cause a hazard. So I'm going to load up all this. Liberal spray. There we go. I'll wheel that into my lab where it will cool down. And be ready for inoculation tomorrow. You can see inside this cooker that I'm using for sawdust spawn that I've placed three quart jars on their sides on the bottom. So it fills in like, you know, feet. And also I've added one and a half gallons of hot water. And then I have one of these uh, racks that I'll sit just right there on top of the jars with some foil over it. The foil's there to, to help prevent the bag from sagging in between, which it, it sometimes will, will do and kind of pinch around one of the rungs. Um, the main reason for it though, for having it uh, rose up some is just to keep the water from ever reaching the bottom of the bags because another problem from cooling the bags too fast is that uh, water will get pulled in through the seams in the bottom or or possibly even pulled in uh, uh, through the, the opening of the bag itself as the water is boiling around it and that will cause a problem obviously you know you can't, your solids will get over wet and be more prone to contamination Although, every time I've had it happen to me, it still seemed to work out, so it's not really a, bit, a, a big thing, but it does uh, uh, make it harder to mix up, because it's a bit more clotted up. And uh, it's just, it's just, I like it a lot better if it's, you know, kept on the dry side and that problems leave you. But ultimately, you want to just stop from uh, cooling it down too fast anyhow, just so you don't get blown bags and whatnot. So I'll stack the bags here. It'll, again, it'll fit six bags per cooker. And with the, the riser at the bottom, they'll come out right on flat on top. 